Education, health and housing will not be on the agenda at this week's government conference. The Chief Minister tells Perspective why not, as well as explaining why people should attend the conference. He'll also tell us a little bit about the health overspend, of which he is very concerned. Later in the programme, Chris Thomas and I will ponder the value of three years' worth of government strategies and policies. But first, an interview I recorded on Thursday with the Chief Minister. The Isle of Man Government Conference is, is, is taking place this, this coming week, and you have a two-day programme. One thing that surprised me was that on the agenda are a range of different things, but... Uh, education's not there, health's not there, and housing isn't there. Why Why have those not been included? Well, we have to pick issues that we think are right at the top top of the agenda, but of course, both with those, both those just, it, um, issues are at the top of our agenda, but we can only put so much in, into a two-day um, conference and make it of value. Um, you know, one of the reasons we went to a smaller venue, um, the Comus rather than the Villa, was that um, there were so many uh, different events on uh, and, and people became so um, dispersed across the arena effectively that I'd, people were, were complaining that they were going to one event and they actually both wanted to be at a, a second event as well. So we've tried to consolidate it. There's only so much we can, we can possibly um, fit in. Um, we've tried to... Uh, focus on issues um, that are very relevant uh, at at the moment to best we can, accepting that maybe one or two areas that could have been in the conference haven't haven't been able to to, to be fitted in. And of course, uh, crucially, uh, what our island plan w- was primarily about was growing the economy, um, and by growing the economy, you can then pay for. Uh, the additional costs of, of running services, um, a lot of the the focus on the uh, on the government conference appears to be about growing the economy. But you know we are learning about the health budget being uh, looking as though it's going to be significantly overspent again this year. Um, is, is this working as as you know, is the island plan working as well as it should? Are we seeing the the growth in the economy that's going to cover these costs? I, well, we have moved forward in in a number of areas, and I'll outline those areas um, over the course of the conference where we have made progress. We'll also, over the the course of the conference, um, talk about some of the challenges and healthcare spending. The state of our public finances is obviously vital um, when linked to the need for economic growth. Uh, and of course, no nation is going to be in a good position if its financial um, finance, if its finances, if its government finances are also not in a healthy uh, position. And therefore, any threat to those finances does need to be tackled and tackled um, immediately. The position with regards to the latest healthcare overspend is very, very concerning. It will have to be tackled. There will have to be a turnaround and that will have to be addressed immediately. And I will make clear to everybody what that turnaround will look like once we have got to to an agreement about what its objectives are and when it will take place. But it will have to happen almost um, immediately. We can only spend what we can afford to spend and we need to quickly get to grips with our understanding that the money that is being allocated is being used as efficiently as and effectively as possible, and all, also that the organisation Health Care, Manx Care, can operate to a financial discipline, mean, meaning that they will stay within their budget. I'll be totally honest with you and with, with everybody else that it is completely unsustainable for them to continue to overspend their budgets, especially given the amount of money that they received in the last year's budget, and particularly given the fact that that also incorporated a tax rise, which means that everybody has had to contribute more in taxation over the last 12 months, and that Manx Care received a further £20 million in direct taxation, as well as £23 million or so in terms of added 
extra uh, allowance from from the treasury and turn from from our income receipts if it's not addressed it will cause us uh, to have a very serious and negative impact on our reserves in the in the very short term and that uh, by itself will be a, a a matter of of great concern. So yes, the healthcare spending issue um, is very very serious, and will have to be addressed immediately. And as alongside that, we will now have to take a very close look at our medium term financial plans uh, and what that means in terms of government efficiency and reform as well. I will address these issues in my opening remarks alongside a number of other critical priorities for the government over the next 12 months. And of course, you refer there to uh, efficiencies ac across government. You, this was something that you mentioned in your um, uh, commitment to Timwald. Uh, I think, I forget, was it June or July, Timwald, that you laid out uh, three or four actions that the government were going to take, one of which is the uh, connectivity, which uh, is it is in the uh, the government programme, but one of the significant areas was looking for greater efficiency across government. Uh, so you've had two or three months to, to now consider that. Is there any obvious uh, solution uh, coming, coming to light? Are you coming up with ideas about how things can change? So I, again, I will outline that um, in, in my opening remarks in terms of what... Uh, our work over the summer has meant and also what in light of particularly the amounts care overspend but other departmental pressures the government is going to need to do in order to move forward successfully um, and you know we will have to put an hour strong emphasis on adjusting our financial plan um, to meet the challenges that have been presented as a result of the overspends and, and overspend indicators that are coming forward in other departments, albeit nothing quite at the scale of um, Manx Care. And we need to be confident that we have the right financial plan for the island moving forward. And I have to put that again into the context of saying, you know, the economy by itself, of course, can succeed and we can grow our jobs and we, we can grow our, ta our tax base. Um, but we also have to control our expenditure and demonstrate that we have financial discipline across the government. And right now, you know, the situation at Mounts Care is very serious, as I said. Forecasted 16 million overspend. I haven't seen their own potential turnaround plan, but irrespective of that now, we will have to turn this around and turn it around very quickly. And as I said, I will elucidate in the coming weeks exactly how that is going to take place and what the expectation level is. One of the criticisms the recent uh, or this year's budget uh, received from the private sector was that government seemed to be living in a different uh, world to, 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 well, certainly to people in the private sector, certainly to most people's lives, um, that government seemed to be happy to carry on spending um, and that there didn't seem to be as much uh, concern about uh, about those uh, efficiencies that you're now talking about. Um, do, do you think there's the, there's a significant mindset change required politically, or is it uh, among officers, or perhaps a mix of both across the public sector to to try and uh, get a better grip on government finances? So I, th I think that it is, this is just not a simple equation and that you need to look across the piece in terms of both what's happening here but also you have to take into effect what's happening in, in the United Kingdom and you can see the pressures that are coming through uh, One, two. particularly around One, two. pay, terms and conditions for, for front-line workers and we're not just targeting in putting this into the civil service but you know police, doctors, nurses... Um, and in the UK's case, train drivers, you know, people who are delivering pretty vital public services, which are keeping the country going in so many different respects. Um, but of course, you have to do that. Also recognising that the vet, that the biggest issue for all of us, and of course, we, we speak on it today when a major report has been put out into the UK and where Keir Starmer has said reform or die in terms of the NHS. 
Um, this is not unusual. They, they, they too are grappling with this almost uncontrollable healthcare spend, um, which is just unaffordable in terms of the current tax base for all of us across uh, the, the, the British Isles as it, as it currently stands. You know, our job is, is, is to get that back un, into financial control. Absolutely, we do need to realign that as quickly as possible and then try and go forward and understand if it is possible to even fund this in, in, in a better way, if it is, does need additional funding. But that's got to be part of uh, the turnaround plan that, that, that is presented and presented very, very quickly to everybody else. And I think, you know, from, from a governmental um, perspective, we set out really to recover from COVID, to set forward an ambitious um, economic strategy and to drive that forward. And I believe in many, there's many examples where we have done that very successfully. But there also comes a point where actually now, as I will outline in my speech on my opening remarks, you know, government has to focus on the priorities almost of, of the day that are also attracting a lot of interest. And we've been through a summer where a lot of those issues actually have arisen both on island but also off island. And whether that's been rioting on the streets as a result of illegal immigration, whether it's been the threats of uh, security breaches over here with, uh, with, 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 the, with an e-gaming um, company, whether it's then big question marks about greater immigration um, policy, these matters have got to be tackled and they've got to be tackled as priorities. Also, we've got to keep going with our, with our economic plan. The foundations of that remain strong, but there comes a point where actually the priorities can need to be refocused. And actually, yes, you've got to have political will alongside that, but also recognition of um, what that uh, problem is in terms of the consequences for government finances in the short term and set that alongside what the plan is um, you know, to, to readjust that and recorrect that. You are, of course, a well-seasoned and consummate, uh, uh, polished politician. Uh, you um, generally, when I do interviews with you, I leave those interviews thinking, Chief Minister's got a plan, and he, he uh, you know, whether I necessarily agree or disagree with the plan, uh, I, I know that you've definitely got one. What I seem to be detecting from you today is um, something a kind of a mix between frustration, possibly irritation, uh, and maybe even concern. I think when you see some of those those figures, then there's going to be a level of um, concern. Uh, you know, when it comes to to finances, don't get me wrong, you know, Phil. I think you know sometimes with all the issues, some of them minor, but some of them also very important that uh, beset us. We, we don't stand in isolation. We never really stand in isolation, whether this is connectivity problems, whether it's the, the challenges of, 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 of financing uh, public finances um, or whether it's security challenges. But the level of attention that we need to pay, pay to them has, has varied. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I think that it's fair to say over the last... Um, 16 or so years, ever since the financial crisis, to a, to a certain extent, through three administrations, we've limped through knowing there's a deficit in the background. In many ways, that has is revealing itself at perhaps a faster pace than, than, than the medium-term financial plan would have probably wanted us to. Therefore, we've got to start paying more cl closer attention as to how um, we adjust our thinking um, moving forward. But we shouldn't forget we are, first and foremost, a safe and secure island in a very, very unsettled world. Um, and secondly, we have huge ability to turn this around and also the foundations for success. But there does need to be some clarity provided. And I'm not short of a plan, Phil. I will be simply outlining on Tuesday and over Wednesday, as will my fellow ministers, how we are tackling some of that and how that will be then, then be more uh, effectively dealt with over the next 12 months. So there we have it. That was the Chief Minister speaking to me uh, on Thursday, Thursday afternoon. In fact, he came out of uh, Council of Ministers especially to, to, to do the interview. Interestingly, in response to the Manx Radio headline, the 
Chief Minister says it's completely unsustainable for Manx Care to keep overspending, and Alf Cannon says a turnaround plan, an urgent turnaround plan, is needed. The Health Minister tweeted, The reality of the situation was laid bare in the Michael report. If we want an NHS, we must properly fund it to keep up with ever growing demand and transform services with an investment into a left shift away from a focus on acute care. The Drazi report says exactly the same. Uh, possibly the, um, uh, the, the health minister there showing some level of irritation. Chris Thomas, <laughs> no, no, well, welcome to the show, I should have <laughs> said. Thank you very much, uh, Phil, for inviting me and for playing me this morning, or this afternoon, sorry, this, that important interview. Uh, we've got lots to talk about and we want to make sure that we talk about providing s solutions that will matter to all of us because we've got some issues that really matter at the moment, like connectivity, like healthcare and so on. Um, your question is about um, Minister Hooper's response and I would be peeved if I was Mr Hooper if the Chief Minister has basically just said that he's going to elucidate what's going to happen next to health care. Um, if he's just heard that the issue needs to be tackled and addressed immediately, that effectively is a vote of no confidence in the um, in the health minister from the chief minister. The, the, um, this chief minister has got a lovely way of saying it. He asks, he, he, the press release always says whatever's happened, that the health minister has agreed to step down from his role. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if in a week's time we don't have a new health minister. It's that serious. Gosh, well, that is uh, serious. And uh, certainly, whilst the Chief Minister um, did tell us quite a lot in, in that interview, uh, there was quite a lot that we're going to hear when we get to the Isle of Man Government Conference um, on Tuesday, 830 uh, um, at the Comas Hotel, uh, uh, Chief Minister is down to give a, it says here a welcome speech. Um, I, I don't know who is, who's who's going to welcome it, but he he's going to give a, a welcome speech that will um, address the redefined strategic priorities of the island plan and how the current challenges and opportunities facing the island are being addressed. Uh, I'm guessing lots of people will be very interested to know what the Chief Minister is going to say. And I'm sure the Chief Minister is still interested to know what he's going to say because <laughs> I'm sure this last week there's been some lively discussion in Council Ministers. I'm sure this last, last week there will have been some lively discussion between tre senior officers in Treasury and Cabinet Office in, in healthcare. And I'm sure they're still writing the speech. Look, the government conference shouldn't be the place where such important measures are announced. They should be inside our political structures and the the public uh, needs to be taken along and the way to take the public along is to tell them as much as you possibly can with inside the constraints that exist of uh, political and economic and commercial realities and give them options and, and now the good thing about what what minister hooper's just hooted ho tweeted is that um is that there are alternatives there are many people in the isle of man who believe that healthcare is underfunded and it needs more money there are also people who accept that the structural deficit has been getting worse, the financial structural deficit has been getting worse in the last few years. That pressure is so great that the Treasury Minister told us at the budget time that the tax rise was temporary, it would be repl replaced by a healthcare levy, and those two things are coming up against each other. I've known uh, for, three, for many years, but at least for the last three years, that there was that tension there. Um, I can give you some examples where it's demonstrated most clearly, but basically that speech is going to set the tone for the next uh, few months of the Chief Minister's uh, administration because he's got some big choices to make and one of them is he needs a new health care minister given what he's just said. And if you talk about... Um, if you talk about the uh, issues in terms of the finances, we need to change the priorities of the financial, uh, uh, where, where we're spending public finances. I was thinking to myself, golly, has the Chief Minister just announced he's joined the Policy Alliance? Because didn't the Policy Alliance come along in July to say we needed to have every commitment that had been made in the economic strategy, the island plan, and elsewhere in Tinwald, costed with identified funding and didn't we say that if there were fiscal gaps there had to be an identification and we needed a debate about that in October. Only four of us voted for our motion, the Policy Alliance plus uh, Tim Glover, and um, 
But now we're being told in that interview by the chief minister that, hey, we were right. We do need to know what everything costs, how it's going to be funded. And if it can't be funded, we need to prioritise our commitments. The the policy alliance, one of the policy alliance members has called for a recall of uh, Timnald or possibly the House of Keys. Uh, to discuss these these matters, uh, she, uh, that was Julie Edge, of course, uh, uh, Onken MHK, and she's been joined by Arbury Castletown and Malou MHK. I think uh, uh, Tim Glover um, calling for a, a a recall to discuss these uh, urgent circumstances. Do you support that? Well, if it's going to mean that we can have a debate about what the chief minister announces uh, two or three weeks earlier. Um, that's a good idea. If, we, if we're just going to bemoan where we are and and all say what we think about uh, sea services and air services and healthcare without any actions arising from it, it's not a good idea. So it it all depends how the chief minister, what the chief minister says on Tuesday morning, what the treasury minister says on Wednesday morning. But if you have a government saying three years in that it's got to reprioritise, it's got to have a close look at things it's promised. We're not in a good place, and we are a representative government with the response with the responsibility to the, the elected representatives in the House of Keys, and I think. And there's also the more wide issue that we do stay away on our summer recess for much longer than most other parliaments. So, you know, conceivably we are going to have to um, to come back early, um, depending on what happens um, at the government conference. And you know, I say it again, it's, it is wrong that um, major policy redirections are announced at a government conference. They should be allow- announced inside the elected representatives' uh, house, you know, the Tim Ward House of Keys, firstly. And secondly, if you take that to its logical extent, does that mean we'll have to wait till next year's government conference before we have any any more new policy announcements? And given that um, we're not being told what's going to happen to healthcare in this government conference, because I think the Chief Minister said uh, in the um, in the coming weeks, I will be elucidating what's going to happen. You know, that's a ridiculous that's a ridiculous situation. So, we, we are at a moment of tension. We, it's now clear that there's bigger spenders and people who believe in smaller, smarter government, and that tension needs to um, to be resolved. Well, we'll carry this uh, discussion on after the break. <laughs> Just before the break there, Chris, you you said that it was inappropriate for the Chief Minister to make bold uh, policy announcements uh, outside of of the... or or, or in in advance of of addressing Parliament, addressing Tynwald or the House of Keys. Um, It happens all over the world, though, doesn't it? I mean, the UK Prime Minister has been at a range of different conferences announcing a whole raft of of different things... Um, none of which have been announced in in the UK Parliament. So um, isn't that a little bit churlish on your part to to try and clip the Chief Minister's (laughs) wings? Uh, Okay, well, it is a tradition. Boris Johnson was very good at it. Just he, He said something and then it was the job of the civil servants to make it happen. And if you objected to it, you had to fight with him about it. That is a tradition in the British world. What I would say, though, is with Sakia, he had, does have a general election mandate and what he's announcing is in line with his general election mandate. What we've got in the Isle of Man is we've got... Uh, the chief minister who believes one thing and quite obviously other of his ministers believe other things. I was very surprised when uh, the chief minister made um, Dr Allenson the treasury minister because I'd already brought out that they had fundamental differences on rates reform, public sector pensions, on even things like the minimum wage and the living wage. And it seemed very strange um, for, to, for, the, for the chief minister to set himself up like that. Now, blatantly we've got divisions inside the House of Keys and inside the Council of Ministers. The Chief Minister's doing what I'd expect him to do, which is um, he's asserting himself as Chief Minister. You and I have discussed before that you know, the Chief Minister often said they're not my, my policies, they're Council of Ministers' policies and he's asserting himself. I've come to the conclusion that to reform the way that we go about policy and policy making and deciding what we're going to implement in the Alamo, we're probably going to end up having uh, directly elected um, executive, directly elected chief minister, appointing some m- members of the House of Keys to the um, to the thing to well, the um, House of we, Keys. We, we've kind of jumped quite, mm-hmm. quite 
quickly to to a fairly radical solution there. Well, maybe it's not so radical, but it's it's (laughs) certainly in terms of the level of support that's ever had, uh, it's perhaps a bit radical. Uh, But you've mentioned there disagreements amongst ministers. I mean, this always happens. It's not a a new thing for ministers to fall out with each other occasionally. Um, Do you think it's 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 worse than 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 normal? It's it's, it's, it's probably not. um, Yeah, it's even worse than in the last uh, uh, administration, the last five year administration, when the Treasury Minister, Mr. Cannon, got directed five times by council ministers, which was pretty unusual, if not unprecedented. Normally, disagreements was, were resolved. Before so how many Treasury... times has the Treasury Minister been directed? I don't in know, because this... I've only been in Council Ministers for 12 months and he wasn't in those um, in those 12 months. But to me, if you, if you talk about we need to have a close look at the medium time financial plan, we need to look at the critical priorities. That's the Chief Minister saying, you know, we can't afford to waste time and officer time thinking about a Douglas bus station when the real plan is to Um, change the way we use the sea terminal and to work with the private sector to get private investment we can't um, we can't imagine that we're some sort of um, socialist paradise in terms of the way that uh, we treat it without having a tax regime that uh, to pay for that sort of paradise and now we're going to have some hard discussions they'll come in Timwood I do respect the chief minister for asserting himself and he's going to have to do it a lot more Um, you know you never know I've already said that I would have thought within a week we might have a new health care minister you know conceivably um, the the, the chief minister will uh, decide he needs a, a new treasury minister that's con- that's conceivable as well. I mean, Alf- Mr. Cannon's father was once Treasury Minister for the first half of an administration. And we're at that stage now in Manx politics. We've got to actually focus on policy and what matters to people. And what matters to people is connectivity, healthcare, education, infrastructure, all those things. That, that, I mean, this is, this is pretty uh, radical stuff you're talking here, uh, uh, Chris Thomas. I mean, losing a health minister, it, it may, may be... Um, uh, something the chief minister could easily do, but uh, losing a health minister and a treasury minister within a week that seems like a week revolution. For the I didn't say a week for the treasury minister, but uh, if, you, if we're having a close look at the medium term financial plan, if we look, if we're reprioritizing things, there are going to be factions inside the House of Keys. There are. We, we've already seen from Minister Hooper's tweet that you read out that he has a different view. He has his supporters, so therefore we're going to have a very honest. House of Keys and Tinwald in the next few months, there will be these debates. And once and for all, we need to decide whether we're a, a relatively low tax um, jurisdiction that prioritises and uses public funds, um, you know, where absolutely necessary, or we're going to try and become um, a, a mini uh, UK um, with lower taxes because we have richer people here. But you can't, you know, one side keeps talking about fact, effectively soaking the richer people to, to pay for this uh, little uh, paradise of ours. So we're going to have some tense discussions and that's, that, that, that's good. That, yeah, that's I, I mean, it is fair to say that you and your policy alliance um, have clear views and you state them. Um, but you don't have a huge amount of support in Tinwald. Is is this not just mischief making on your no, part? No, we need to we need to decide how, what we're going to do next after the first three years of the Manx Care experiment. We need the hospital working better. We need community health facilities working better. We need social care working better. And so we need to uh, be honest and open about what we can afford. And we are you know, the now we've got the Darcy report across, and the focus is on what's now called the failed 2012 reforms on which our system is based, we're going to have to have that uh, debate. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if in October, Tim Wald, there's not already a motion um, about that um, issue. In terms of connectivity, I think we'll hear at the government conference that uh, there's lots of solutions for improving our air services not, um, particularly, but they just haven't been funded because that hasn't been a priority for for Treasury and the... Uh, or, put just pa- or perhaps we haven't even got enough money to even consider funding them, and we need to have that out with people. Uh, just to give you a really radical, uh, a really radical um, solution, um, you know, you and I worked on the basis up until 2016 that we'd have a regulated sea services company, um, and uh, we'd control... Um, the ports. We've ended up having a nationally owned, nationalised sea services company and we control the ports. Perhaps we're better off now looking to 
put out, you know, you and I ran a, a tender of interest for call for expressions of interest. And I think we've got six or seven um, people who are interested in our um, Irish Sea services. Why not do the same again? Perhaps we could partner with Stenner or the Danish company or one of the others who expressed an interest at the time and work better to solve our ports issue and to solve our sea services issue. These things have got to be on the table. They're obviously political issues, um, and uh, that's where that that's where we are. And, and to a certain extent, uh, going back into history is 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 interesting. It was certainly interesting for me because I I, I was keen on that policy, but. Uh, you know, you, you can't turn back, really. You've nation- well, not nationalised. You've you've brought brought into government ownership the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Um, I mean, if you if you then uh, tendered out the route, you you've lost all okay. your investment. We're not necessarily tendering out the route. You know, we now have a c- company that's the only people who know what's going on in the company are Treasury because Treasury get invited along to a pre meeting every six months before the board. It could be that we need to change the governance of it quite soon the the um the um the select committee will report back i think that that's a report that's overdue like the energy report and then we can see what they've suggested but i, I think what i floated was a partnership or a a shareholding in our steam packet so that we improve the governance and the management um and when, when there are people out there who look at the Manxman and think the Manxman perhaps is a bit like our um, NHS. It's massive. It's got huge windage with all these people buffering it with wind from all sides. And it can't just be stopped and started again. It's going to have to be carefully manoeuvred. And and uh, I think that's where we are in terms of connectivity and also in terms of health care. We've got to carefully manoeuvre Manx Care and our health service uh, because we can't just keep stopping and starting again what matters to people is how their operation goes and, and, and what I suppose, social care they're getting. I suppose, uh, following uh, uh, what, what you've just said there, I mean, uh, Laurie Hooper's got a point, hasn't he? Uh, you know, you, you, you've set yourself a course of action. You, you head off on that course of action. The course of action is clear. It's identified in the various reports that uh, Minister Hooper quoted. And then all of a sudden the chief minister comes piling in with... Uh, we've got to we've got to alter course, and we've got to do it in the next few weeks. Well, perhaps, but um, I would I would say that the three years of Laurie Hooper's Minister Hooper's helm uh, of the um, NHS Manx Care Super Tanker Big Boat Manxman type structure has been more or less every demand for extra funding is correct. His party position is healthcare is unfunded, and what the public's beginning to see now underfunded. is it, underfunded. The guy, the guys, the, the, the ministers just keeps keeps repeating the call for more money, and there are obviously efficiencies. The professionals have been completely marginalised by Minister Hooper. Just read the Isle of Man Medical Society report on what should happen next. It's not only Minister Hooper's fault as well. People are uh, frustrated that the board seems to have marginalised some of the clinical professionals. Um, I, I, I managed to get the health, the, um, the House of Keys at least, to vote against abolishing the Health Services Consultative Committee, although it was overruled by Legislative Council. So basically, I think the public, I think Minister Hooper's going to have to go because he he's his main mantra for the last three years has not been about reform, it's been about it's underfunded, it's underfunded, we need more money. But you always get uh, in in health politics some uh, medics who, who disagree with the general direction of travel. Uh, I mean, certainly all the time that I was involved in, in, in the House of Keys, that was happening. Various ministers were being attacked by... Um, consultants or s- senior uh, medics at the hospital who who disagreed with the course of action. Yeah. Others um, f- felt it was fine, and and in a democracy you will have a range of views. Yeah, and that is the case. It's just now the Isle of Man Medical Society and the uh, nurses and the professional representative bodies have been taken out of the structure compared to how they were in the structure when Minister Anderson was having problems in 2013 and the like. So you make a very good point, fair point. It's just a. Uh, the response has been just to eliminate them from the um, from the Manx Care Board, and to, to, to I think they feel marginalised. There are people who are big fans, who are consultants and big fans of Manx Care. You know, they could be the ones who are earning half a million pounds that as presented in the um, in the um, government accounts this last year. Well, at the beginning of the programme, I asked the Chief Minister why housing, health, and education weren't part of the. Uh, of the the new or well, this this week's Isle of Man government conference, um, 
Were you convinced by his answer? No. So last conference, 2023, September 2023, one of the big three announcements was the establishment of the process to create a housing association. Heard nothing about that since in the House of Keys and Tinwood. I don't believe local authorities have been consulted. There's huge frustration in Douglas City Council about their housing plan. Castletown um, is also very frustrated with its huge development in uh, West Hill, um, School Hill. Ramsey seems to be very frustrated about not being able to execute its plans. I know what I did when I was in infrastructure to begin the process of revisiting um, how we finance housing. David Ashford made some very important points about the, the pressure on the housing budget from other parts of infrastructure. We need to solve it. You know, we haven't gone about it the right way. We should have been going in and, and learning from the five excellent, five or six excellent housing professionals in, in Douglas and the others around the island, rather than just sit, having somebody sat at a desk with a consultant, you know, pontificating about um, how it might be in the Isle of Man. And we just seem to be beginning in the same way on, on waste. So housing should have been there. And in terms of education, you know, likewise, although it's perhaps not as, uh, not as, um, not as, as pressing, and uh, health we've talked about quite a lot already. So the, you've given the health minister a week. Uh, the treasury minister's got a little bit longer. And now you're gunning for the infrastructure minister. Well, I do think the uh, infrastructure department since I left has sort of taken on the um, mantra of being the royal family a little bit, you know. Um, we, we never complain about how we get treated. We And we never explain what we've done. And that I find really frustrating because I did get in a lot of... Um, scraps I'll call it on social media because I was always trying to explain and I'm here today to try and explain what we can do about making it better for sea services and air services and everything else you want me to ask me about and I just think for the last uh, 15 months the infrastructure department's just opted out of that you know they're back now as as the whipping boy that everything that goes wrong is just because it's top heavy bunch of useless people managing the infrastructure department and in fact it's a bit more complicated than that. Yes uh, I I know to my cost uh, how uh, trying to defend the infrastructure, <laughs> infrastructure department doesn't always work out. Um, other things that are on, uh, actually are on the agenda, are um, activating AI in the Isle of Man, which seems, uh, well, I, I don't know. You tell me. It, 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 is that a high priority? Is that one of the big issues uh, that the Isle of Man is facing? Well, artificial intelligence is very important. Um, on Timwell Day, I am one. The Manx Radio program did a, a brilliant um, take on, on me using um, AI. It's obviously very important. I am sceptical about the amount of money that's being spent on um, in the public sector on economic development. I do think we need to uh, revisit how we um, how we how we go about to making sure we have economic growth um, for, the, for now and in the future. And that goes back to what we started talking about in terms of infrastructure. What matters most for economic growth is having good sea links and good air links. What matters next most is probably having good housing for the people who, who um, stay here or come here to take part in our economic growth. Um, education is hugely important as well because everybody cares about their own education and those of those around them. So we need to get the air services right. So I know that the airport director has talked with his um, senior management team and politicians about, you know, paying EasyJet to keep a plane here so we can have an early morning flight um, to the southeast. And we, we take some of the pressure off the evening flight coming here being cancelled. Why hasn't that been implemented? I know that in the tower they have got big plans about avoiding having air traffic controllers get, getting up in the middle of the night for a med- medical emergency, which is what happens at the moment by moving, you know, by moving those sorts of um, provisions somewhere else on the island. These are very practical things that the, D- the, the Department of Infrastructure or the airport management should have been explaining very clearly. But I just think uh, we haven't got very much uh, beyond... Um, just criticism and it's all fat cats, well, we do. fat cats. I mean, so. we, we will hopefully find out a lot more about that at the government conference. So. Um, I mean, there's a, uh, how long is it? It's neat, it yeah, getting on for uh, two hours um, given over to talking about that uh, 
connectivity. I really hope so, because that's absolutely pressing. And if uh, the chief minister and the ministers and the officers concerned don't step up to the mark, we've got a very serious problem. And we will need to recall House of Keys and Tim Wood. Uh, the, um, the agriculture industry might be surprised to note that uh, the um, deaf minister, Claire Barber, is giving a presentation on the UNESCO biosphere. Uh, there's no mention of the, the meat plant and uh, the, the various... Um, concerns that there have been uh, expressed. I mean, some farmers, well, the president of the Farmers Union told me on, on one of these uh, programmes not that long ago that uh, he was uh, deeply worried about the state of agriculture. Um, are, are these the right priorities? No, no, fair comment. And you know, we must have an announcement soon on the meat plant. Um, government accounts have now been... Um, Management accounts have just recently been published and they show things like the meat plant subvention very clearly and how much it's increased. And they also show, for instance, to go back to our last conversation, how much is being spent on subventing airlines already for flights um, to the, the southeast of um, England and northwest of England. So there will have to be an announcement on the meat plant. And by definition, then it must be coming quite you know, either in Tim Wood or sometime between now and Tin Wood. So perhaps so, the, the criticism of Claire Barber is unfair in that maybe she's waiting till October Tin Wood to announce something. I, 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 you know, I'm not personalising it. All I'm saying is the government conference was uh, a proposal um, of the Labour Party back in the first debate on the island plan back in February 2022. Their proposal, although I've got to be fair, they they gave they they shared credit with Miss, Miss, the chief the chief minister, um, who had floated it, although he hadn't mentioned it in the island plan. And the proposal was for the public to debate policy development, and that hasn't turned out to be the case. It's basically been where some initiatives are presented. Three last year, some of which are forgotten about, apparently, like the housing association. Um, but there have been other announcements as we're talking about now. So the um, you know the, the existence of a healthcare uh, turnaround has just been announced before the conference, although the detail won't be there for a month or so. But, the, so, but there will be lots of Q and A opportunities. To, uh, that's why I'm going. To, I'm to going engage. to the government conference. I'm going to the government conference to listen to people and to speak with people and to find the mood of the people who are there. Because what that is. It might not be the literal meaning of a conference, but that is why it's helpful and interesting. It shouldn't be questions to ministers. It shouldn't be ministers telling you what's going to happen to you. If, it's, if there's a value, and as the Labour Party accurately said back in February 2020-22 when they, when they moved for a, a government conference every year until 2025, they wanted a debate. And to me, a debate is you have the pre facts presented to you clearly. You have the options presented to you clearly. I mean, I, I hate to give... To credit to the, to the people of uh, your generation in, in the time, but to be fair, Mr. Tear and Mr. Robertshaw did it much better than the current lot, or in, even in fact than we did it in 2016 to 2021. So Mr. Robertshaw bought those um, special machines, and him and Mr. Tear went round, you know, talking about options and then asking people to vote on them, and would seem to be genuinely listening to people. And that's a much better way of having these uh, these conferences and the um, the set piece. Um, way that we're having now, especially given that they're in, out in the Comis Hotel and they're only on a sp focused on a specific group of people. You know, farmers aren't really going to turn up if there's nothing that's interesting to them. You know, perhaps one of the uh, enterprise ministers and in initiatives might be that farming's been moved over from those troublemakers in DEFA over into the Department for Enterprise. Who knows? But um, but um, but but let's see what happens. <laughs> well, certainly we we'll, we we'll look forward to, to to finding out what does happen. I mean, that the, 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 there are lots of very interesting things on this uh, this agenda for the government conference, and, and certainly I'm going to go to both days, and I will be covering the conference for perspective certainly next week, maybe the week after as well, depending on what's said. Um, the, I suppose the, the question then is, you know, we're three years in to this uh, government. Uh, we have had, a, well, this will be the third conference. We've got lots of strategies. We've got lots of policies. Um, the, the core objective, I think, of our island plan was growing the economy, growing the number of people uh, economically active on the Isle of Man. It is part of the problem here that that's not been as successful, perhaps, as government might have wished. So the uh, the increases in in spend, particularly on health, 
can't uh, can't be paid for because quite frankly the the, the increased taxes that had been hoped for are, are, are still to arise is is that part of the problem no, you, you you've nailed it that's it in a nutshell growing the economy is everybody's or uh, well, most people's uh, objective and ambition how to do it is what's disputed the treasury minister's view and the people who voted for him it seems and perhaps many more people have the view that we should spend part of our national reserves now to grow the economy and it'll all come out right I've described that as a huge gamble previously you know we've got that national insurance fund sitting there conceivably we'll we'll be hearing soon about um, drawing down the national insurance fund for health care and for economic strategy that's been intimated to and, Tim and we've members. also got energy reserves we've, yeah we've got the the uh, certainly the the um what are they called Orsted's uh, yeah. wind wind proposal yeah. we uh, Kroger that all seems to have gone gone yeah. quiet um but potentially um certainly hundreds of millions of pounds maybe even billions of, of pounds available there yeah you're right and you know so that's one perspective uh, which is uh you know draw down the reserves the other perspective is manage for a rainy day the traditional manx way is low tax um a rainy day pot and we 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 we, we, we balance budgets and so on as you say another option is to look at the um the resources inside our territorial seas the main main ones of which are the offshore wind and the hydrocarbons and uh, Mr. Edge has got a, a beautiful question down about um, the revenues that can arise from both of those sources, plus also the uh, telecoms and the other cables that go through our t- territorial seas. And that is a crucial, a crucial question that's going to be on the table after the government conference. I couldn't help but notice, though, that um, the wind farm gets a special slot on the government conference, but hydrocarbons are completely um, missed out. You know, what's that all about? Um, I don't uh, well, think you we'll be... tell us what 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 do you think that's well, all about? Uh, um, I I can't really criticise a three month extension um, to put, to get more information um, from Kroger because I proposed that, but I proposed it in July 2023 to give them three months um, through till October 2023 to answer the questions that we've been asking properly. I met Mr. Robert Shaw lots of time. I met Dr. Hubbard. I met his excellent. Um, um, his excellent drilling team. I met his environmental advisors. I met lots of people, and we still had questions. And I wanted to extend it for three months in July 2023 to get more information. We've now gone 12 months. We've had a, now an extension for three months. I, so I can only read it as being Kroger's currently persona non grata in government. They don't get an invitation to the um, to the conference. Perhaps I'm wrong, but we need to have an objective assessment of the relative merits of hydrocarbons offshore. Um, wind for our future the public needs to hear the facts the facts are having a wind farm over a gas field that's exploited is perfectly compatible you and i I hate to go back to the past again but you and i knew that in 2015 and 2016 i never knew because i was only a departmental member but either you or um minister skelly signed the uh, contract with uh orsted we know who signed the koga contract because that's been published surprisingly the the orsted one hasn't why why would you choose to publish one but not the other but anyhow they they can coexist um, they have to work together but we've got on the one hand we've got one of the world's leading um offshore wind providers with our license in our seas and on the other hand we've got a startup um, hydrocarbon gas um, gas firm and it must be quite tricky for Orsted no, to know how to um, how to uh, relate to a, a locally controlled um, startup um, gas company given the given the complete difference in nature and size of the organisation so for me energy is incredibly important I, I, I'm, I believe that we should be doing a 3D seismic survey now which is the right time to make sure that we drill properly um, to actually to have real uh, with, with not only a vertical will but a, a horizontal bits flowing out um, to test uh, a wider area and uh, you know, that's that's where we are I definitely and, and think this, the energy debate is crucial and this is all very interesting and sadly we're, we're almost out of time we've only got a minute or two left um, but you know this, th- these are the same conversations that were being had certainly in my time maybe 12 13 years ago um, how are we still just having those conversations I'm afraid your answer will have to be brief <laughs> um it's shame. It's shameful, and I share. I share um, responsibility. Um, we now need a new dynamic uh, 
of politics. We need honest debates, and uh, 2026 general election is going to be crucial. But e- even before that, this conference speech for Mr. Ca- for the Chief Minister, Mr. Cannon, is absolutely crucial. <laughs> Well, um, as the music suggests, we are just about out of time. Um, do, do you have any hope, Chris Thomas, that uh, the the conference is going to be a, a, an exciting affair that's going to have lots of good new initiatives that are going to result in the Isle of Man being a better place? I'm a prisoner of hope. I always see glasses that are half full rather than half empty and let's hope that what goes along around the conference is hugely valuable and let's hope Minister Cannon and Dr Allenson, Minister Allenson step up to the mark and reassure us all. Well, uh, thanks very much, Chris, for coming and, and into the studio today. Um, Michael had sent a text in which says, uh, what happens if there's World War III? Uh, sadly, we, we don't have long enough to, uh, to, to ponder that question. Uh,